So this is a video about nullish coalescing, um, mainly for TypeScript, but it can be watched if you if you just want to use it for JS as well. Um, nullish coalescing is a very very fancy way of saying if the um, left side of the double question mark is null or undefined, do that. If it is anything other than null or undefined, then do it. Um, as in, do the left side, not it. So this is null, so it will do default string. This is zero, so it will do zero. And that is basically it. Um, so I'm going to run through some code on how that will be useful. And I'll try and um, do it in the most TypeScript way possible, if that makes sense. Um, for those of you who have watched my video about optional chaining, I'm using the exact same folder and the exact same object from it. So it'll look very familiar. Um, if you have come from that video, one change I did make is I added this export at the top to tell um, TypeScript that this whole file is a module. So it's just a little hack to prevent further errors. Um, so I have made this extra file here to do knowledge coalescing with, but I think I'm going to stick with the index TSX, sorry, TS, because a um, lot of code is already there. So I'm going to get rid of this down here. Um, and let's, let's check this out. So say I want to make sure I have, um, let me think. So I want to make sure I have um, pink ladies over Granny Smiths. Um, I'm just talking out of my head. I haven't, I haven't practiced this, so let's just, let's just roll with it. So any apple, any apple will either be a um, number or undefined. So I'm going to use my nullable type here. Nullable number. Cool. Um, I highly recommend that you watch that previous video to make sense of this nullable type. Um, because it will be confusing to those who don't know what it does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a ternary to say um, if if um, I want um, what are the Granny Smith pink ladies um, green apples green apples. So I say I want fruits dot apples. Dot green apples, which don't exist. Um, or pink ladies. So it's actually what this is saying. Ignore the red un underlines that make sense of it. What this line is saying is if there are no green apples, give me pink ladies. But if there are green apples, then give me green apples instead. So that's sort of saying this. It's saying, yeah, give me the value, um, which in essence means this will never be null unless they're both null. But anyway, so we can do a bit of um, uh, optional training here as well. And we can stick that inside the interface because it doesn't currently exist. Uh, make that a nullable type as well. Optional here. Cool. So that should all pass. Uh, and this actually should be a number. So let me change that back. Console log this. Spell number incorrectly. Cool. Um, so this, of course, is undefined. So it'll give me the value of pink lady, which I'm going to make a big number so you can see that's actually working. So let us compile tsc index.tsx ts. Cool. And that's run node index.js. And then we have 101. Okay, because this is undefined, it's doing that. Um, and now let's actually change this to say uh, Granny Smith. So Granny Smith does exist. So what this should return to me is two and not 101. So let's do that. Do that again. Then do that and then you see we get two. So why on earth would you ever do this? What what scenario can you think of where you, where you do this well? Um, I've used it just a few minutes ago, um, and I'll tell you what I used it for. So basically, I had an if statement. I'm going to write some pseudo code here, and um, bear with me. So what this if statement does 
we would do a fetch. So it would fetch, I don't know. In this case, let's say we fetched types of, or let's just fetch some more fruits, more apples actually. So I'm gonna fetch more apples, but we only wanted to, or I only want to fetch more apples on, in certain scenarios. So one scenario I, I want to do it on is if there are no apples in, in this fruits object. So if you do um, fruits and then it has apples or this is, yeah. So fruit.apples is, trying to think of the best way to do this without being fancy. Actually, okay. Say we want to do fruits.apples. Yeah, okay, fruits.apples equals 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 null or undefined, null, undefined, whatever. Actually, let's do that. Double banging. So we're saying, basically, if there are no fruits, or oh, sorry, no apples in the fruits array, then go and fetch more apples. But we'd also want to do a fetch if there are, I'm trying to think of a scenario, if there are, if, if, we, if we want to force a fetch. So we have a variable or um, let variable, force fetch, which will be a, boole a boolean, and we'll call that false. Or null at the moment, actually. No, okay. So it's a bool, actually. I'm not using my nullable here. Nullable bool. Okay. So, oh, you can't do that. Oh. There you go, different programming languages. Okay, so we've got force fetch. So we're, we're saying if force fetch, put that there, is true, so we're forcing the fetch regardless, right? Then you do that. But if force fetch is null, then check if there are any apples in there. And if there are no apples, then do this. Does that make sense? I'll explain it again. So we want to force the fetch, say we want, we want it to fetch regardless on certain pages or on certain scenarios. Check that this has a value in it, so it's not null or undefined. And then if, if it is null or undefined, then do that. So it, yeah, I'm explaining it very badly, but let's just run some code to see if it works. So get rid of this. Okay. So force fetch is null, da 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 da. Um, then let's get rid of all the apples. Um, just put that here. Get rid of all the apples inside here. Cool. So I'll comment that as well. I don't need that. So what this should do, if my code is correct, is it should console log fetch more apples. Okay. Let's try this. Nope. Okay. My code is incorrect. What have I done wrong? Um, right, so we are checking if fruit.apples exists. Yeah, that looks fine to me. So if fruit.apples, hmm. actually, this isn't how you do that. This is not how you write this piece of code. I'm just being fancy for the sake of being fancy. Okay, so if apples in fruits, this is how you do that. There we go. Put that in brackets. Okay, so if apples in fruits, um, actually if apples is not in fruits, there we go. If apples not in fruits, then run that control log. Um, I think that should work. Let's try that again. There we go. The apples not in fruits will fetch from apples. But let's just say that apples are in fruits, right? Oh, I just not deleted it. Let's just uncomment everything. I should have commented them out. Let's copy this. Put everything back the way it was before. Cool. And then paste this back inside. There we go. So now apples are in fruits. Um, 
if I compile this code and then da, 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 run this again, it will not run the console log because the apples in fruits. But say I just want to force it, so I'm going to say okay, force fetch, make this true. Um, then run this. And it fetches some apples regardless if there are apples inside it. Now the beauty of having this a boolean is that you can I can make this a required um, argument in certain functions. So say I've, I've got a function, so I don't know. Check uh, function to check apples or something like that. And an argument is um, or check for apples. An argument is force fetch, which is boolean, and this will be a void. And then we have all this stuff inside that. There we go. So check for apples, and then whenever this check for apples is run in certain places, because this is a required input, if this is false, right? So there are apples inside here. I've made this a required input, and I've made it a false. Input. Uh, let's get rid of that because I don't need this anymore. This is served its purpose. So if I console lock this, no, actually, uh, it runs by itself anyway. Um, in fact, let me be very clever for the sake of being clever again and make this an. Um, will this work? Is that how you do that? Yes? No? Okay, ignore me. I'm just trying to be clever again. But let's just run it at the bottom. Check for apples, which should be a void because it doesn't do much. Um, why did that break? Expects an argument. Okay, so it expects an argument, false by default. Of course. Okay. So now, even though there are apples and I've told it to be false by default, what it's going to do is it's going to do if. This is null. It's not null or undefined. Actually, let's let's be even more clever and make that nullable because it can be nullable and make this a required input um, and make it null by default. Is that how you do that in TypeScript? Yes? No? Parameter gonna have question mark. Okay. What? Okay, whatever. Um, Right, where am I? Okay, so I've made this required input, not anymore. I've said this is going to be false. So when this runs, it, even though um, there's a value in here, so it's not null and it's not undefined, it will not run this because this is a false. So let's prove my point. It doesn't run it because it says false. Um, but when I say it's true, uh, and then do that. It should run that to fetch from apples. Um, the other way, not the other way, sorry, let's, before optional training was introduced, you would have to probably do that. And you probably have to have a nested if, state, nested if statement. So it'd be if force fetch, um, I don't know, does not equal equal null, then uh, do, then do this. Put another if statement inside it, and then all that stuff. But yeah, you get what you get my point. But because there's optional training, um, you can not optional training. Sorry, uh, knowledge coalescing. You can do this fanciness and then have this all in one line. Um, it took a long time to explain, but I hope it makes sense. Thanks for watching.